Hi, welcome to Podiatry Practice Mastery. My name is Don Pelto, and I have Rocky Lalvani. Welcome, Rocky. Thank you so much for having me here today. You're welcome. You're welcome. So you are an expert at um, helping business owners be more profitable. And we can see a couple of books, if, if people are listening, Profit First, a uh, great book, and you kind of help people implement that. So let's at a high level, Rocky, tell me a little bit about your backstory, how you got interested in helping people be more successful and profitable. So I have always been a numbers geek. I mean, I've been playing in spreadsheets for decades. Um, and on top of that, I've always been fascinated with building wealth. And I'm always confused as to why people struggle so much with this. And I've spent a lot of time just kind of figuring out the answers to those questions. And then the biggest shock to me, though, was I, I figured it out on the personal side. I just didn't realize that business owners weren't looking at their financials either. I just assumed they were. But if you think about it, business owners are people. And so they're no different. They do what they love. And unfortunately, for a lot of people, finances, numbers, and spreadsheets are not on their list of things they love. But they are for me. So yeah. it's a good fit. <laughs> and, and so what, what are, so besides us having to look at spreadsheets, uh, I guess, what are some of the, the things that people can do to be more uh, profitable in their clinics? So I think up front is understanding where your profit is actually coming from. Um, so there's a book you can't see over here. It's called Islands of Profit in a Sea of Red Ink. It's from Jonathan Burns. He's an MIT professor. He looked at large corporations. And what he found in a large corporation is 20 to 30% of their offerings produced the vast majority of the profit. 30 to 40% of the offerings actually lost money and the rest was break even. And I think the same thing is true in medical. Now, I don't know as much about podiatry, but if I've heard stories of people who are in, let's say, the eye surgery business, they've looked at their practice, they've realized that Medicare is literally a money loser when you look at everything involved. So they, they had the courage to say, we're no longer going to take Medicare patients. They lost 80% of their revenue. They collapsed their office down. And with 20% of the revenue, they still made the same amount of money with 20% of the work. So I think this follows through to everything. If you look at what you do and you actually figure out how much time and how much overhead and how much maybe if you've got materials or so forth that go into that service, how much all of that costs and how much you're getting paid, you can start to realize, hey, wait a minute. When I do X, I'm really not making any money. I'm breaking even. But when I do Y, oh my God, like when you actually look at what the return is, it's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean you sell why to everyone who doesn't need why, but it means you start advertising and say, hey, we do why, and you start making it known so that you attract the audience who wants that. You start putting your efforts and your time to where you see the greatest rewards. It's not easy to do this, and you don't need to be perfect, but if you can take the time to at least look at where your major sources of revenue are. What does the billing look like? And what does it actually cost to deliver that service? I think it's eye-opening. Hmm. I, I really like that a few years ago, um, we cut out certain insurance providers. Mm -hmm. and, and there were certain insurances very similar to the Medicare, which we haven't uh, removed. They, The amount that you earn from just an office visit really didn't make it beneficial to have them in terms of our overhead, you had to almost do what we call a procedure on every patient, meaning you had to rip off their toenail, take out an ingrowth. You have to do something besides just that office visit. And so we opted to just not see those patients um, and many times doing pro bono work for free versus, and, and that occasionally happened. So that that's really, really interesting. So let's see, you do have, let, let's just pull out uh, a couple of these from my hat. Uh, a few things that I know that produce very well uh, are orthotics which the cost versus the reimbursement is, is handsome. Um, let's say something called shockwave treatment or we call regenerative medicine, which is kind of cool. 
uh, a couple of those things that are that are cool treatments. And I, I like the the way you talked about. Well, then you start advertising just about those things. Not saying you don't do all the other plethora of stuff that we do. You start focusing. So, what are some methods of people to to market to those? Are you talking? What do you think is effective? So, I think what is effective really depends individually on the business, where it's located, and how it tends to attract clients. Uh, these days, digital advertising is big. I'll be honest, I think a lot of times if you're not clear and you don't have good messaging, it's not hard to waste money on digital advertising. If are people searching for this type of treatment, are they Googling it? So if they are, then then it's a Google ad word to look at it in your particular marketplace, right? So if I'm in California, I don't want to advertise to New York. I want to advertise within a 20 mile radius. And I think understanding how a lot of these systems work, you can advertise within a specific area. Mm -hmm. The other thing you can do is, are there certain interests or are there certain places that these people who want this tend to be? Because then you can advertise into those specific places. Mm -hmm. The other thing though, that we like to talk about is creating content that makes you the expert. So creating content about, and I'm not that familiar with the orthotics. Why is one orthotic better than another? Mm -hmm. Why is this better than that? Why should you consider this one over that one? What are the pros and cons? So if somebody starts searching and your article ranks high, you're going to start to become the expert. You're going to start to draw people in. Mm -hmm. So I think you have to figure out what works for you, what happens what works for that market, test, see what words actually draw those people in mm -hmm. before you put a lot of money behind it. And what what are, so if, if this is the correct way, what would be the wrong equation for profit? What what are people, what's, what's, what's the 80% doing that's incorrect? So we haven't even talked about the equation. Everyone is told from their accountant, sales minus expenses equals profit which means profit's a leftover, it's an afterthought. It's what happens at tax time when your CPA says, congratulations, you're profitable, here's how much you owe in taxes. At which point, usually there are two questions. The first question is, where is that money? And the second question is, how am I supposed to pay that tax bill? And so all of this is based on Mike Michalowicz's book, Profit First. And the key here is a new equation, which is sales minus profit equals expenses. We actually scrape our profit first. If you're supposed to be profitable, well, then the money should be there to remove at the beginning. If it's not, then there's a business problem. Mm -hmm. And then this way at tax time, when the question comes up, congratulations, you're profitable. You're like, yes, I know. There's the $100,000. And as part of the profit first system, we actually save for taxes so that when the tax bill comes, because it's inevitable, we can stroke a check for taxes and we're able to handle that easily. Now, all of this is based on principles. The principle it's based on is Parkinson's law. Parkinson's law says a business will use up all the time and money allocated. So, you know, if you come to me and say, we've got a project, I'm going to have two questions for you. What's your timeline? What's your budget? Whatever your timeline and budget are, that's what it's going to be. So if you have a big timeline and a big budget, we're going to spend it all. We're going to use it all. You constrain it and you give me a small timeline and a small budget, we'll figure out how to get it done. And, and that's really the principle behind it. And that kind of lends itself to the 80-20 rule. 20% of what you do produces 80% of the results, which goes back to what Jonathan Burns said. I looked at all these big companies, 20% of what they did produced 80% of the profits. The same thing may be true in your practice. The key is to finding the 20%. Hmm. I, I like that because I, I know this is a, a personal thing. When I first started, I, I got, I got, I didn't have enough in whatever what they call about the the snow fund or the emergency fund, the snow, whatever that guy uh, Ramsey talks about. And I, and I was making all this money in the, and at times and I was trying to pay off my student loans and I was paying them aggressively. And then all of a sudden I had to ask for a, an advancement in my next year's salary because I'm like, 
when tax came around, that was a lot of taxes we have to pay, especially if you're not used to it as a doctor. So this can be in your clinic and also be in your in your personal life, uh, ways of dealing with that. Hmm. Right. That's and cool. basically what we do is every time a dollar comes in, we give it a job. So a dollar comes in, a certain percentage of that dollar is allocated to profit. A certain percentage of that dollar is allocated to taxes. A certain percentage is allocated to your pay because you deserve to get paid. And then a certain percentage is allocated towards your operating expenses. And this way, you're giving each dollar a job. You're telling it to go do that. And you actually separate these funds in separate bank accounts so that you can look at your operating account and go, okay, this is how much I truly have to spend. You can look at your pay account and say, oh, okay, I can pay myself there's enough money for me to pay myself. And if there's not, well, then you know you need to go bring in more revenue hmm. or there's a problem with what you're doing. Um, what, um, I was gonna ask, I think this is one of those questions you gave me here, talking about appropriate pricing and learning to say no to unprofitable business. So as a healthcare provider, I know you talk about, we can advertise for other things. Give us some tips about how we can say no to some of the unprofit, because there are certain things that are, un, I think some are unprofitable, but others we just might not like to do as well. Like some things that might pay well, but we're not very good at doing or we don't like to do, but even though they may pay well. Well, so I think you gave one example before. You said you stop accepting certain insurance companies. That's one way to do it. A second is just to say, we don't provide that service. Just because someone wants it, and it's doable, and you know how, doesn't mean you should do it. Because if it's not something you enjoy, and it's not something you're going to get paid well for, either or, then why are you doing it? I think too often, it's like, oh, well, you're here, I can do that. Sure, you can. But does it make sense for you to do it? Mm -hmm. I think in your business, it's a little bit more constrained. You know, if you think more of the handyman, Maybe he's really good at windows, but he's in putting in windows and they they ask for siding or painting. Well, I'm not so good at painting, but I'll do it. And they don't even know the right amounts to charge because they don't they're not doing it all the time. They don't have a good equation for how to price it. And, and then they get stuck. And then hmm. afterwards, it's like, oh, I didn't realize it was going to take that long and I was going to get paid so little. Hmm. So, so Rocky, I think there's two scenarios of, of our listeners. Some are uh, podiatrists that own their own practice and, and they can implement this in their practice. Um, and, and, and do you have any tips for getting, if you have three partners, how does everyone get on the same page? And, you know, one of the partners runs the finances, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of a, a group sales thing. It, it is. Um, so my first question is hopefully the person running the finances is good at it. And they should be showing you, they should be answering these questions. Mm -hmm. You should be asking them, well, hey, what should we be providing service-wise? What are our most profitable things? If they don't know the answers to these questions, well, now you guys have to sit down and figure it out. Mm -hmm. So I think it's number one, having the conversations. Having money conversations are difficult because man, money is a taboo subject, but it shouldn't be right? Money is nothing more than a tool. If we sat down and we had a, a conversation with your partners about certain tools you use in your office or, or certain equipment, would it be emotional? Not mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. But why is there so much emotion around the money? The money is just a tool in your office. And I think the first part is removing the emotions, understanding that it's a tool and then understanding how to use your tools the best that they can be used and taking care of them. I like that. And if someone, like I think you, well, you started to use the Profit First system in your personal life, let's say we, we, we talk about our own personal life, how, how would you do it personally? So if you think about it, everyone says, pay yourself a first, give every dollar a job. So if you're, if you're drawing a paycheck from your company, the simplest, easiest way to implement Profit First in your life is to give to your 401k or retirement plan. It's automated. You don't even see it. You don't even touch it. You don't even do anything, right? It automatically comes out of your check before you see it, and it's put aside. 
If you haven't seen the power of compounding, it is phenomenal. But if you do that routinely from the time you come out of school till the time, you know, 10, 20, 30 years, you end up with a ton of money. And what that money does is that it gives you the freedom to say no, because you have the cushion to walk away. And, and that's a big part of it. When, when you're struggling for every dollar of revenue, you're going to keep saying yes. Mm -hmm. But when you niche down, when you figured out your sequences, when you've got good flow coming in, you can learn to say no. Good. I like, I know that was the first thing that we did, you know, the 401k and then you get your wife on the books doing something and you can both put, and it grows awfully quick and even, yeah. It grows super quick and then it starts to compound. And before you know it, it's just exploding. But the biggest thing with all of these things, you have to take action and you have to start. And I think that's the biggest thing that doesn't happen is people read the Profit First book, but you know how many actually open the bank accounts and do it? A very small percentage. And those that do that, they hit the first bump and they give up instead of figuring out what went wrong, what do I do to change it? Because here's the reality of Profit First. In the first six to 12 months, things will go wrong. You will run out of money in your operating account. You will have to steal money from yourself, but you're doing that because you're realizing, hey, wait, I'm spending too much. And we're all told you got to spend money to make money. I think that's a fallacy. Yes, there are certain things that you do have to spend money to make money, but you should be very careful about how you do that and think twice without knowing when the money is coming back, then you really shouldn't spend it. That's good. Tell us a little bit about your course and kind of how you help people. So what we do, we realize that Profit First on its own is great, but there's a lot more to running a business than Profit First. I kind of look at it, you know, imagine flying a, a jet plane. You go into the cockpit, it's full of dials. They all tell you very important things. Most businesses are more like a Cessna, but you still have a handful of dials. Profit first is one dial on that on that aircraft. It's it's basically your fuel gauge, but there are a bunch of other dials that you need to understand in your business. And once you start to understand the dashboard, once you have targets, once you know where that plane's going, it always seems to end up on the runway, right? In land where it's supposed to. Most businesses don't have clarity of where they're going and they don't know how to read their dashboard. And so what we've done is we've taught profit first, but then we've taught you how to build your dashboards, how to read the dials, and then we give you a ton of support. So when you have a question, you have an answer yeah. and that you can move along. We remove all the friction. Mm -hmm. And then you have a, a blueprint. Is that what you have? Well, that's what that course is. That's the profit okay. blueprint. That's for people who kind of want to do it more so themselves or with a little bit of help. And then we do this for all our clients. We do one-on-one -on -one if that's something you want. So we've got something wherever you are in, in the business spectrum from a revenue side. Now, I'm going to talk about the, the last, I guess this is probably even a, even a personal thing. I find that implementing change, Rocky, for busy physicians with families and other competing obligations. And since we like to read the similar books, any, any, any good ideas on how to do that? Like I, the, what works best for me is blocking time and, and investing money. Those are the two big things that work. Any, any other ideas if you've ever struggled with something like that? I, honestly, I think the biggest thing is taking the first step. I have found the first step is the hardest. Once you take the first step and you start moving in a direction, everything else starts to fall in place. I think people struggle the most with going from zero to one than they do from going to one to a hundred. And so just get started. Now, if you've got to pay somebody to help you get started, okay, do that, but then you better take action, right? That's the biggest thing. It's accountability. And yeah. honestly, I think that was the biggest thing I learned in my in my business was the accountability we provide 
is literally, I think, what's more important. The two things we do more than anything, accountability and removing friction. When you hit a speed bump, we push you through it. We tell you how to get around it. Mm -hmm. And those are really what we do. Well, great, Rocky. I think we covered a, a lot of nice things. And so some of your parting words of wisdom, any good books? I said you have one here, The Road Less Stupid. That's a book uh, that people Yeah. It, if you haven't read Keith Cunningham's The Road Less Stupid, uh, it is, it's really about how to run a business, how to think about your business. Every single chapter ends with the same pretty much closing line. Now go think. I think the biggest problem, you know, what, what's that book, Thinking Grow Rich? Mm -hmm. Everyone seems to forget what the first word is. Think. If you don't think, you're going to struggle in your business. And everyone's too busy doing in their business. A lot of what we talked about is thinking time. Where is my profit coming from? Right? How can I make a change? So that that's a great book. If you haven't read it, it's phenomenal. Great. And uh, where is your website or best way people can reach you, Rocky? So before you come reach me, if you enjoy this show, if, if you know, if Doc Felto's giving you some great advice, say thank you, hit the like button, share it with another podiatrist, just give them a little love there. And then after that, if you have time, I have a podcast, it's called The Profit Answer Man. And we teach everything that we talked about in much more depth here we show you clear examples of success and how others will help you to be more profitable. And the website is profitcomesfirst.com. Great. Thank you, Rocky.